Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five items that did well for me during Q4 on Amazon FBA Canada. All right, so it's currently December 20th as I'm filming this and the sales have pretty much dropped because it's it's way too last minute to buy uh, stuff to make it in time for Christmas. So I wanted to share five items that did well for me. And I'm going to share, you know, what the item was, the picture is going to pop up on the screen, what I bought it for, what I sold it for, what the profit was, and what the fees were. All right, so I'm going to start off with the best one first. And this was a diehard DVD ultimate collection set and i got it from a thrift store for four dollars now when i saw this i knew instantly that i was going to get it and that it was going to sell for a high amount so this item sold for 89.95 the fees were about twenty dollars and 68 cents and the profit was about 65 dollars and 27 cents now, I love finding these items because it's like a major win when you get one of these and you buy the item for $4 and you sell it for $89.95. Now, if you were watching my videos from the summertime, I had mentioned that I started going to thrift stores and just checking around things. Sometimes I bought things to sell on Craigslist, but I would mainly go to the DVD section and find brand new unopened DVDs. And you know, they have lots of DVDs because people just get rid of them because we all just do Netflix and chill these days and people don't want them anymore. And there's a lot, like you'd be surprised, like every time I go in, I can find brand new unopened DVDs, meaning like they still have the cellophane packaging around the actual DVD. And depending on when you go, it'll range from, if it's not a DVD set collection, they'll usually be like one or two dollars. If it's like a DVD set collection, it can go four dollars and above, but I tend to get them when they have their sale days. When you sign up for mailing lists on at thrift stores, you there a lot they have a lot of 50% off, 20% off days like all throughout the month. So these are the items, the hidden gems that I really love to find because it's like one item and then you get a profit of $65. And it wasn't even a very big item at all. It's just a DVD set collection. DVDs are funny because it's like, you know, they're going, they went out of style. We're into live streaming, video, TV, that type of thing, Netflix. But then it's like they're becoming extinct where people still want to collect them. They become like a nostalgia type thing. And because most people overlook them, they're like, oh, DVDs, those are totally out of date. I'm not even going to bother with them. So for that particular DVD set, I was the only one selling that one and I priced it at $89.95, which I thought would be good because it was quite a collection and it was like the whole set and Die Hard, Bruce Willis, that whole thing, they have like a fan base, like that was an iconic movie. So I would suggest finding some DVDs DVD sets that are unopened and new. I find that if they become used, then the profits start to tank and then you can't really price very high. Second thing was this Treehouse DVD club set. So another DVD set and this was from Dollarama and I, I saw them in the DVD section and there were like these cubes and I was like, whoa, what is this? This is a new item because I go to Dollarama quite often so I know when new stock comes in. I saw these cubes and I was like, whoa, what is this? And it was like Treehouse, DVD, uh, Ultimate Club Set, something like that. And there was like a bunch of DVDs. I can't remember exactly how many. Now, here is something that I did last year as well with a Dollarama item. So when I scanned this item, this item was $4 and I ended up selling it for $38.95. The fees were $13.80 and the profit was $21.15. So here's the thing, when I first saw these, like 
in September, October. When I scanned them, they were not uh, selling at the $38.95 price point. They were selling more like around $19, which you don't get very much profit at all. Now, most people would look at that and be like, okay, uh, moving on. But when you have the experience and you see a, a good potential item, because to me, this was more than $19.95 in my opinion. The way that it was packaged, the, the whole collection set, it looked like more value to me. And so I went into that listing, I saw how many other people were on there, how many people were doing FBA. And I was sort of looking around and seeing how many of each DVD set, like how, how much inventory did other people have. And it wasn't too high and also you want to pay attention to if Amazon's on the listing, if Amazon is on it. And you can see that if there's, if there's no number, if they say like uh, 10 remaining, then there's less than 10 remaining, like 10 and less remaining. But if they don't have a number at all, it means that they likely have more than that amount. So if Amazon.ca is on the listing, I will not go on it because they probably have a huge stock. They have the money to buy a lot, so they probably have a lot of that item, so I'm not going to go on it. Good thing was Amazon wasn't on it, and the other people they didn't have very many, like they all had like each like less than 10 each. And so even though it was at the $19.95 price point, when I went to go list it, I listed it at, I think initially like 39. I wouldn't start off at 38. That's not something that, that's not a number that I would start off with. So I likely started off at 39 and I just left it like that. And I waited for Q4. Because I knew, and this comes from experience, and just knowing brands and knowing the customer and knowing Q4, I knew that all those other ones were going to run out and then it would be my turn. So I waited until my turn and I bought all of them in the store. I think I bought like 10 of them that they had in the one store. And all of them sold when it came to my turn. And that's an example of still buying an item. Initially, from first glance, it's not profitable. But knowing the right season that you're going into. And like if this was summertime, I wouldn't be, first of all, sending it in. Like if we're going like, like after January, the sales are usually going to tank. And like I wouldn't be sending it in after January and going into spring and summer. I would wait and then as Q4 approaches, send it in like I did. And last year I did the same thing with the Guitar Hero Xbox uh, 360 game. Uh, it was like an actual guitar thing and Guitar Hero is a popular game and they were selling them for $4 and I bought all of them as well. Same thing. Uh, people were selling them for 19 something and then I waited again. I did the exact same strategy. I waited until Q4, until December, and then they started selling. It came to my turn. There were other people selling. There was like more than, I'd say, five to eight other sellers selling the exact same thing for a lower price. I waited until they sold out and then it went to my price point and actually went past me and it went even higher and higher. So I could have even raised it higher. So pay attention to products like that where it might not seem profitable now, but coming into Q4 and that whole Christmas season that it's likely to sell. And it was really cool because all of them sold. Item number three is the Goosebumps board game. So I know Goosebumps because I used to read Goosebumps when I was a little kid growing up in the 90s. We would always order the books from Scholastic. My mom would order them when you get the flyer and then you'd be like, I want this book and this book and this book. Probably now it's done online. And I saw this board game in chapters and it was $10. And I knew that these were going to sell during Q4. So I bought about three of them. They sold for $49.95. 
fees were fourteen forty-five, and the profit was approximately twenty-five fifty. I like board games, uh, unique board games. I typically stay away from like Monopoly or just really like the ones that everyone knows that they know the price on, and you can't really play around with it and go too much higher. I like the different board games that aren't so common. Number four was this WWE Randy Savage wrestling toy. The only reason why I know who this person was is because when I was growing up, my cousin made us watch, it was WWF at the time, and he made us watch that wrestling show and he would like try moves on us and put us in a headlock and you know, just try and be funny that way. And so I knew this character from watching the show. And because it was from the 90s, I knew that it would be like vintage, a nostalgic type item. Like typically, the person that's going to buy this is probably going to be older that they watched. They were a kid in the 90s and, you know, they would want a collectible like this. And I know that WWE, WWF, they have such a strong fan base. So I actually bought this online for $8, sold it for $59.95, fees were $15.10, and the profit was $36.85. Now this sold pretty much instantly as soon as it went up. I bought it online and actually can't even remember the store. It was like not a brand name store, but it was online and I, I randomly found it. And I listed it and it, you know, arrived into Amazon FBA and then it pretty much sold within the first week of arriving there. I wished I had bought more because I was testing it. I hadn't sold an item like this, like the character named Randy Savage. I hadn't sold one of those before, so I was just testing it, just got one, and it sold right away. And the last one, number five, is this Little Tykes basketball hoop thing. Now, the cool thing about this basketball hoop is that it gets taller as your children grow. So their selling point is like, you know, you can have this basketball hoop as your kid grows from like three, age three, four, five, six, and like as they get bigger, then you can make it a little bit taller and taller. And then it's like a toy that has uh, a long, a long period that on it. So there was a sale on this. I think I got it from Walmart or something like that. I can't remember. And I also had like a coupon. I ended up getting the item for $10 and it sold for $51.97. The fees were $16.30 and the profit was $25.67. So I think I got maybe two or three. I've sold a bunch of little tykes, uh, different types of toys before. So I know the brand and I knew that this one would be like a unique one because it, it was a basketball hoop that, that grows with your child. So again, I'm looking for products that have a perceived value of being a lot higher. Like I ended up getting it for $10 and for sure you could sell that for way more. Like it was a pretty sturdy toy. It was a decent sized toy. It had that unique selling point of being able to raise it as your child grows. I knew that would be appealing to parents and that they would be willing to pay, you know, the $50 range for it. So those are five items that I sold for really good profits here in Q4. I create these videos so that you guys can see that I'm also doing this as well. I'm not going to any special type stores. I'm buying the same things that you guys would see in stores. And I just want to show you guys that it is possible to find items like this. Very doable. It wasn't hard to find these items and that there are profitable items. So if you guys like this video, let me know by subscribing and clicking like on the video and leaving me a comment. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Back, back, back from the dead.